Hello, my name is Mark Ellis from Stick and Rudder Studios, and today I want to take you through a tutorial about uh, expressions, formulas, and the integration with Fly with Lua for X Keypad 1.5. So, in today's uh, tutorial, we're going to cover uh, expressions, formulas, a little bit about Fly with Lua, and the shared data refs that we that X Keypad creates that allows you to integrate with it. And then after we go through that, we're going to go through the Cessna 172 virtual sample, and we're going to walk through that and look at expressions and formulas actually uh, in use. Okay, so exactly what is an expression? Well, an expression uh, with an X keypad allows you to define variables uh, as data refs. Um, and then what you can do is you can use those variables in a mathematical expression to create a new result. And then that result can get used as either a logic, you know, either a logic data ref, uh, you know, to drive the logic on your commands or your labels. Any place where you would have used a logic test, you could replace um, the source for the logic test as an expression. Um, and you can also use it as a source for numeric values within a key label. And what what this allows you to do is if you've got um, if you've got, let's say, multiple pieces of data within the simulator and you actually want to combine them in a mathematical way uh, to show a result or to make a decision with an X keypad, you could use an expression to do this. Now, prior to X keypad 1.5, uh, the only way we could do this is with the integration with Fly with Lua. And I am going to show you when we actually go through and look at how we use expressions and formulas. Uh, when we get to the walkthrough, I'll actually show you how you would do the same thing using Fly with Lua and the pros and the cons of, of using the two different uh, methods. Okay, so what is a formula? A formula, frankly, it's nothing more than a global expression. Uh, and uh, it has a couple of extra capabilities with it. The one thing um, with an expression is you have to use it at the place that you define it. If you define it as used with a logic uh, data ref, then basically it's going to be used only with that one logic uh, that one logic data ref. Uh, if you use it to replace a logic test, you can only use it in that one instance. A formula, you can define uh, the expression, and then that expression result will actually get put in a formula data ref that can then get used by multiple keys. Um, you also have the ability with a formula to define a named data ref for the result. And what that actually could do is you, you could actually do a calculation and use that calculation to store data in a, um, you know, in a simulator data ref if you wanted to and actually operate and control uh, the value uh, or the behavior of the simulator assuming that the uh, data ref you want to write to is, is indeed writable. Um, so they're pretty powerful. Fly with Lua. It is a very powerful scripting language. Um, I mean, frankly, if you've been, in, been around XSplend at all, you're going to find that there are some incredible Fly with Lua scripts that people have developed that can do incredible things. Um, it's uh, basically a full-blown programming language. Uh, the way we integrate it with X Keypad is uh, we use this concept of writable shared data refs. Um, and there are 50 float shared data refs, there are 50 integer data refs, and 50 custom strings. And this allows you to manipulate these data refs either in X keypad and then have them show up in your Fly with Lewis script, or even the other way around. You could do calculations and logic within Fly with Lua, uh, populate a shared data ref, and then that shared data ref uh, can get used in X keypad as either. Uh, for logic testing or maybe even displaying information with, with on a key. Uh, so Fly with Lua is very powerful and frankly it uh, was very commonly used uh, prior to uh, X Keypad 1.5. The only challenge with Fly with Lua is it's a little bit more verbose. I mean some people will like that because one can argue it's a little bit more readable than maybe a formula or an expression. Um, but you got to know a little bit more in order to be able to create them. Um, and the other challenge with them is at the moment, uh, if you want to share your configuration with uh, the x community, you do need to make sure that you package up all your Lua scripts along with your JSON file for X keypad 
and make sure you give users instructions on how to copy those Flywood Lua scripts over to the place in Flywood Lua where they need to go. So a little more tedious, um, and I do think down the road I might actually look at making enhancement to X keypad where any scripts that you're using with X keypad could actually get bundled, bundled up in the JSON file and automatically published to fly with Lua when uh, this when your uh, plane gets loaded and your X keypad uh, configuration is loaded. But that's uh, that's for another time. So with that, why don't we go ahead and fire up X plane and let's take a look at a sample key and how we would use uh, um, expressions and formulas in fly with Lua. Okay, so we have the um, X keypad editor up and the configuration that I have loaded is the X touch mini legend that I that I created to go along with the X touch mini configuration. And uh, for those of you who don't have an X touch or didn't look at the video, what this uh, uh, virtual device does is it kind of gives you a legend that you can put on a monitor that you would put right behind your X touch mini. And then uh, it helps you kind of know what encoders are, are programmed to what. And as you switch layers, uh, as I'm doing right now, I'm using the layer button on the X-Touch Mini, uh, it'll show you the different uh, encoders that are being used and what the buttons mean. Uh, so what I want to take a look at is this, this heading um, encoder legend right here. Now what's interesting with this is uh, we're using dual encoders on the X-Touch Mini and this heading can have three different, this, this particular legend can have three different definitions. One is for the heading, and you can see here as I'm turning the X-Touch knob, it's adjusting the heading. If I do a short click on the, um, on the center button on the encoder, it then turns to the ADF card. And also if I switch to the layer, now what ends up happening is that same encoder is used to adjust the time in the simulator. So we have this interesting situation here where this label has to have three different definitions. And what's interesting is, is there is no one single data ref that you can look at um, that's going to tell you what, what it is. You actually have to look at a combination of am I on layer A or layer B? Um, and if I am on uh, you know, layer A, then what I need to look at is what's the state of the encoder um, uh, the dual encoder, is it in co encoder definition 1, which would be the heading bug, or is it in encoder definition 2? So this is a great place where we can use an expression to intermix those two data refs to come up with a single value that we can use. Um, and let's take a look at this key. If we take a look at the ADF card, and we come over here and we look at the logic data ref, you'll see that I've got this checked off as an expression. And uh, now let's come in, let's define that expression and take a look at what it looks like. And what I'm going to do is just make this a little bit bigger here so that we can see everything. Okay, so in this expression, we have two variables that we've defined. One variable is called layer, and it is picking up the data ref x touch last active layer. And it has a value of either 0 or 1. Uh, 0 means you're on layer A. One means you're on layer B, and let me actually just operate the layer buttons on here, and you could see that it actually changes. Okay. The next variable I call dual encoder, and what we're looking at here is there's a, a data ref array called the X touch encoder mode, um, and it's got an array of 127 because you can have uh, 16 encoders on a single X touch mini, and then you could have up to eight units. So here, by looking at encoder encoder six, I'm actually looking at that sixth encoder, uh, you know, on the, um, you know, on the on the X Touch Mini, which is basically that heading encoder. Now that I've got these two variables defined, I can then combine them in an expression. I'll just uh, break those down and I'll bring the expression up. So here is where you do the expression, and in the expression, it's Typical math stuff like multiply, divide, uh, many of the C uh, math functions like uh, ABS or uh, cosine, sine, all that stuff is available. Um, but it's also got some basic condition capabilities. And the conditioning syntax looks very similar to what you would see in um, Microsoft Excel. You have an if statement, 
and then in the if statement you basically give it a condition and my condition here is if the layer variable equals one indicating that I'm in um, I'm in basically layer B mode that what I'm going to do after a comma I'm going to return a zero so what that means is that a zero indicates that I'm in layer B and that encoder now means it's time of day um, if I'm in layer A now what I have to do is I have to look, I'm going to look, I'm just going to simply return what the dual encoder variable value is. And it has a value of either 1 or 2. 1 if I'm in the primary, if the primary encoder is selected, and if I click the center button, it'll be a 2 indicating that I uh, had a um, secondary button, the secondary encoder selected. And let me see if I can actually show that to you here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so if you take a look up here at variable 1, as I click that center button on that encoder, it goes from a 1 to a 2. Okay? And you can also see down here the result. So the result from the vari formula is going to be either a 0, indicating that I'm in layer B and the encoder is, is basically manipulating the time of day. If I am in layer B, it's going to return... Uh, either a 1 or a 2, depending on whether I'm looking at the primary coder, which is heading, or the secondary coding, uh, encoder, which is the, um, the ADF card. So that's how you can use an expression uh, in line and something like a logic uh, data ref to drive conditions that you would not normally be able to, to discern with just one data ref. And uh, this is pretty obvious, but if we come over here now and we look at that particular key label, um, you can see that it's got three conditions. Zero, we're doing the time of day. In one, we're doing the heading. And in two, we're doing, um, you know, the ADF card. So it's pretty straightforward. And, and that is an example of a use of an expression. Now let me go ahead and load up the Cessna 172 full-blown uh, X keypad sample and let's take a look at how we would use a formula. All right, here we go. We've got the Cessna 172 sample up and the key we want to take a look at is this fuel selector down here. Uh, and what's interesting with this fuel selector is you'll notice at the very bottom we're showing you how much fuel has been selected in gallons. So as an example, if I switch between the left tank, which has got 22.5 gallons, if I select both, it's going to show me the sum of those two, 44.9 gallons. And if I select the right, it's going to show me the contents of the right, of the right fuel tank. Um, so uh, what's interesting here is we don't really have a single data ref within the Cessna 172 that shows you the fuel available to the engine. Um, the other thing too here is if I come in and I operate this cutoff valve here, you're going to see that what happens is the fuel is going to go down to zero. And I even made the the fuel selector flash uh, red and yellow, indicating that that uh, fuel selector uh, knob has been pushed in. So in this case, we've actually got to look at uh, you know multiple data refs to come up with this calculated available fuel to the engine. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the formula we use for doing that. So let me move this out of the way. And let's look at the fuel selector key. And in particular, we want to go to global formulas. So I have a, for, a global formula up here called formula, it's formula zero. Um, and the, I named the formula selected fuel in kilograms. That's what the formula is going to return after it calculates everything. And the conversion, by the way, from kilograms of fuel to gallons, we actually do that on the key. You know, when we actually, and I'll show you that in a minute, when we actually display that value, we multiply it by a factor, which will convert it from kilograms to gallons. Um, okay, so before we get into this formula, a little bit about formulas. You can define up to 100 of them, and again, they are global, okay? The, um, the result of a formula is actually going to get stored in a named data ref, and I'm going to come down here and we're going to look for it. Uh, so you'll see right here, if we look at the result of this formula zero, the result is 126.155. You'll notice down here 
the name of the of the formula data wraps. You can get them as either a float or an integer, and there's 100 of them, as you can see by this index down here. And index 0, which is formula 0, is showing the same value here, 126.155, that you see up here. Okay? So the advantage of formulas is um, if I use that formula in multiple places, and I've actually got the where used expanded here, you could see that I'm using this in four different places. Um, they're used on uh, unit 0, key 14, in condition 0, 1, 2, and 3. Those are, are, those are the four conditions for the uh, state of the uh, fuel selector, um, either left, both, or right, and with the fuel cutoff, you know, shut off. Um, and I'm using it on those particular uh, uh, segments of those four key definitions. So the beauty of using a formula is it gets calculated once per flight loop, but then I can use that one formula float data ref. I can use it in four different segments. Now, what I could have done is I could have actually gone in on those segments and where it asked me for uh, the numeric data ref, I could have overridden it and defined it as an expression. Were to work just as well, the only disadvantage is that expression, the, the actual math calculation, it would have gotten run four times. Now, the good news is these aspects of um, C++ code and the way this works, it's blazingly fast, okay? Even if you had defined it four times on that key, you would never even notice the fact that it was taking up a little bit more horsepower from your CPU. But that being said, and that, not only that, but you know, we only calculate it every 16th frame anyways because we don't need to update the X keypad keys that often. Uh, you know, your eye's not going to be able to see it change that quickly. So no harm, no foul. If you do decide to do these in line and you do the multiple pl multiple times in a key condition, but if you want to be super efficient, you would come over here and you would define it as a global formula, and then you could use that formula data reference and in many places as you want, and there would be, you know, it would only get calculated once per per flight loop within X-Plane. Okay, so same concept, okay? Let's close the where lose. The variables we're using are, we've got uh, fuel under bar left, which is the uh, C172 fuel left quantity data ref. Uh, variable number one is fuel under bar right, and that's given as the quantity in the right fuel tank. Then we've got the variable called tank, and that is showing us the value of the tank selector. And the tank selector is either, uh, let me bring this over here. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, so it's a, it's a one when it is in the left position. It's a two when it's in the both position. And it's a three when it's in the right position. And one thing I want you to notice with that Notice that there, it's not an integer, it's a float. It actually changes in decimal values as you rotate it. Now, um, the reason why that's important is when we get to fly with Lua, you're going to see this. You can end, if you're doing uh, floating point comparisons, sometimes you can end up with a precision issue where it's like, you know, got a, you know, a millionth of a point difference and the, and the equation won't work exactly right. So we'll actually look at that within... Um, within we do the fly with Lou example, because sometimes you actually have to do it as a range when you do the comparison. For whatever reason, um, it seems to come out right on the button in our expression, so we don't have to do a range. We can do an, a, a direct equation. Um, the next variable is the cutoff, which is either a uh, zero in the case when um, it's not cut off and it's a one when the cutoff is actually pulled out. Okay, let's take a look at the expression. So this formula, the way it's going to work is if the cutoff is equal to 1, meaning that the little cutoff knob is pulled out and the fuel's cut off, then I'm going to return 0, indicating I got no kilograms of fuel. Uh, I basically starved the engine because I cut the fuel off. Um, if it's not a 1, then we're going to come down to this next condition, and we're going to say if the tank equals 2, indicating that it is in the both position like it is right now, it's in both, and you can see that the tank uh, variable has got a value of 2, then what I want to do is I want to add the left fuel tank and the right fuel tank and return that value. If it's not 2, then I have to check whether it's either in the left or the right. And all I have to really do is do that once. If tank equals 1, indicating that it is in the left position, then I'm going to return fuel under bar L, 
which is the quantity in kilograms for the left fuel tank. Otherwise, I'm going to return fuel tank under bar right. So you can see it's fairly straightforward to do. Um, you know, the syntax can be a little, sometimes not the easiest thing in the world to read because it's got this, you know, basically you're using a comma where you would typically would see an else statement. Um, so they're a little harder to read, but they're very compact um, and they're all packaged up with your JSON file and they work pretty well and they're very fast, you know, because there's not, not a whole lot of coding behind, you know, where these go. Um, and with any formula, same with expressions, you can add comments. And I'll just make this a little bit longer where you can see where I cut it off. You can, you know, comment, uh, you know, what this formula is all about and how it works, okay? And even, even within the formula expression, you can have comments by simply uh, doing two forward slashes uh, at the end of the line and then putting in whatever text you want. Uh, the comment ends on the, ne on the next line, right? So you're back into, you know, doing... Um, doing expressions. And if you make a mistake, it's going to show you that you got an error. Like if I just, you know, get rid of that, um, this is showing me that that particular uh, variable is missing. And if I hover over it, you'll see what it actually says, right? So it's it says it can't find uh, A and K uh, for tank. It says the variable A and K is not defined. So I have to put the T back in here and the error goes away. Okay. So that's how you use expressions and formulas. Um, and you will see in the Cessna 172 example, I've used them in a number of different places. Uh, so if you just poke around the sample, you can see how they can get used and they're, they're pretty helpful. Okay, why don't we now take a look at how we would do this exact same thing in Fly with Lua. So what I'm gonna do over here is we're gonna go to X-Plane 11 we're going to go to the Fly with Lua folder, scripts, and I have a script here called xkeypad c172 totalfuel.lua. And let's open this up in uh, Notepad++, which is one of my favorite text editors. And we'll bring this over here. And walk through how this script works. Now, let me be clear, I'm not going to try to give you a full-blown tutorial on how to use Fly with Lua. There's great documentation. There are thousands and thousands of examples uh, up on explain.org with people that have done stuff. Um, and I will caution you, some of them get really sophisticated. Um, but I will walk you through this one so that you can get the basic concept of a syntax. So Fly with Lua scripts, they get run initially any time a new aircraft gets loaded. Uh, and when a new aircraft gets loaded, you have an opportunity to put a, what I call a guard around the script. And the reason why you would need a guard is if you are using any data refs that may only be defined in that particular type of plane, if you don't put a guard around it, what's going to happen is, is when you load a plane that doesn't define those data refs, when Fly with Lua cannot find the data ref, it's going to balk and have an error and give you all kinds of little red little warnings in X in X plane. So uh, most people will put some kind of a guard around the script to indicate that it only should run when that particular plane type is in operation. So up here, I've got an if, if statement that says if the plane ICO code is a C172 and the plane tail number is N172SP, then this script will run. And that combination of ICO code and that tail number happens to be the default Cessna C172. Okay, so that's the way I can guard it. And the reason I need to do that is there are some data refs down here which are C172 specific that without this guard band, the script would fail if you loaded like the Baron or the Zebo 737 or, or whatever. The next thing I have to do is just like in the formulas and the expressions, I had to associate a fly with Lua variable with a data ref. And we do that with the fly with Lua command data ref table. And there are, frankly, I think two or three ways to do these variables. I happen to like using this data ref table because it works very nicely with data refs that either are arrays or not arrays. Um, if it doesn't have an array, you just reference it as index zero and it just magically works. So for me, it, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm defining four local variables here called fuel under bar L fuel under bar R for right, and you can see where those are associated with those same data refs we use in the formula in X keypad. We have a tank variable, 
which is looking at the tank selector, and we have a cutoff variable. Now, here's where the integration comes in. I've got to get this back to X keypad in some way, shape, or form. So I have to put it someplace where X keypad can see it. And this is where those shared data refs come in. So I've now defined a new local variable called shared float, and I referenced it to the uh, shared float data ref array. And I just happen to say here in my comment, I'm going to use index 4 uh, for this. Remember, there's, a hundred, there's 50 of them, 0 through 49. I just picked 4, and that's the one I'm going to use um, for this particular script. And when I get into my key definition, that is the, the index I'll reference to pick up the, the uh, value in uh, kilograms. Then we have our function called calculate fuel. This is the same thing as basically the expression within the formula or the expression. This is where we're actually going to do the math. And we're going to go through this in just a minute. But then below this, this, uh, this um, you know, this um, function called calculate fuel, we've got another definition called do every frame. And under do under every frame, it's telling Flywood Lua to call the calculate fuel function every time a frame is being rendered. Now, we probably don't really need to do this quite this often. We could probably do this uh, do this often, which I think is like every five frames or something like that. You could look at the Flywood Lua documentation. Um, we don't really need to do this at the rate I'm doing it at. You could slow it down if you wanted to. But basically, uh, this calculate fuel function is going to get calculated every time a frame is rendered within X-Plane. Um, and Flywood Lua is, frankly, very fast, too, so it's not going to really cause any significant degradation to your to your FPS. So let's take a look at the logic. If the cutoff valve is equal to 1, and here we say cutoff 0, uh, even though this, this data ref does not, is not an array, uh, non-array data refs, you just reference them as index 0, and you, you get it. So if the cutoff equals 1, that indicates that the cutoff pull valve is pulled out, and there's no fuel going to the engine. So we're going to set shared float index 4 to 0, 0.0, indicating 0 kilograms of fuel. Same thing is, is if it's not a 1, then it must be a 0, indicating that it's pushed in. Now we're going to look at the tank selector. And here, if you remember what I told you, that tank selector is actually a floating point number. So it, it, it's got a little bit of a precision issue with it that if we try to equal, if we try to equate this to exactly one, um, or actually two, we'd end up potentially with it not not actually doing the if statement properly because there's a little bit of a precision mismatch in Flywheel Lua. So I'm simply saying here, if it's greater than 1.9 and it's less than 2.1, that's a two. So it's in the both position. And in that case, I'm going to set shared float four to the sum of the left fuel tank and the right fuel tank. If it's not a 2, then I'm going to look to see if it is a 1. And I do the same thing. I do a simple range. If it's greater than 0.9, less than 1.1, that's a 1. means that the left fuel selector is in the left position. And I'm going to set float number float shared float 4 to the left fuel tank uh, data ref value. Otherwise, it, it's got to be in the right position. So then I'll set shared flow floor to the right fuel condition. All right, so that's what's going to happen. And this script is actually running right now. And to show you that it is, if I come down here and I look for shared, uh, sure enough, you'll see shared float floor over here. It's showing as 126.155, and that's what we're showing up here in this formula. And if I move the tank, now it's showing 63.038, and that's exactly what it's showing down here in shared float 4. So for me to use this, all I'd have to do now is come over to that key, and let's make sure I'm on the fuel selector key, and, and down here where I've got gallons, all I'd have to do is change this from the float formula. I would just change it to the shared float. Paste that in there, right? And I think I said we were using index 4. And if I did that right, it's showing 22.5 gallons of fuel. Now, I'd actually have to go in here now, and I have to change this for all four of these conditions, right? Because each one, right, where I've got the gallons, um, 
you know, I've got to change it from the float formula back over to the shared float floor formula, uh, float data ref to get that to work. But that kind of shows you the, the two different ways you can do things. And it's simply up to you as to what your preferences is. I find that the expressions, uh, what's kind of nice about them is you can define them right within the X keypad editor. Um, they go along with your JSON file. So if you want to share your configuration with other users, you just give them the JSON file and everything just magically works. Okay. The disadvantage I think to them is I don't think that these formulas are as easy to read as a fly with Lewis script. Now you can see the fly with Lewis script. It is a lot more verbose. There's a lot more things you got to do. You got to put this guard bed in here. Um, obviously you got to do the syntax to define the variables. Uh, you know, your logic is probably pretty much the same. You got to make sure you put in this do every frame, uh, you know, function to get it to run every time. Um, and, you know, you have to keep track of what shared floats you're using to move data back and forth with, but they are really easy to read. Um, and you can document them. And frankly, they're incredibly powerful. You can do all kinds of wild things with these, including creating, you know, new complex strings that you can then, uh, you know, render with an X keypad on a, on a key. Um, but they're a little bit more, you know, a little bit more work to putting them together. You have to remember to package them up, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, with your, um, uh, your configuration, if you're going to share it with other people. And to be honest with you, sometimes not all script developers are good about doing these guard bands and making sure they use local variables. And you can sometimes have script interactions with other scripts that you may have downloaded and installed uh, from xplan.org. It's, it's rare, but it can happen. Uh, but I think it's your choice as to which you would like to use. Uh, and I would say that if you're starting to get to be really complicated with your with your formulas, this is going to get a little unwieldy if you've got too many nests, too many nested ifs in here. Um, it gets a little hard to deal with, uh, and uh, and that's where you might want to switch over to using Fly with Lua. But you'll have to experiment with it and see what you think is best for you. Okay, I think that covers uh, what we wanted to cover in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy uh, X Keypad.